This example will show how you can create motors automatically. Previously, we've been adding motors with known distances, known speeds, and so on and so forth. But how do you get the, uh, the drill head to match the angle of that angled face? Very difficult to figure out manually, but with a tool called inverse kinematics, uh, it's a snap. Quick rundown of what we've got. We have got our ridge groups, five of them defined, and you can see what they look like. We have got just a single motor on here for the actual drill itself. We just thought we would go ahead and add that one um, automatically, or for you. That, uh, which means we have a, a new type of a joint, a drill joint, which has linear translation that moves up or down based on the circular pitch of a, uh, of a drill bit or a screw or something like that. And we also have some joints and just a quick view of what those look like. We have got uh, six or so joints that define angular um, uh, movement, uh, translational movement, and a few other things. All right, so let's turn everything off here and let's introduce a new concept that we have here, and that's called a joint jogger. We've seen in the past how you can use the move rigid group command to grab something, move it around, and uh, you know you can kind of quickly verify if the joints are doing about what you expect, but the uh, results are, are kind of random. You kind of push things around, but you're not sure if you exact have the exact uh, behavior. There's a command up here called joint jogger. What that will let you do is cycle through all of these joints to see if you have the correct translation of the transporter, the correct rotation of the pivot, the correct rotation of the, uh, the up and down for the pivot, the rotator head, and so on and so forth. So whether you have a single joint like a, um, a revolute joint where you can do only one uh, movement, we also have this opened up for things like cylindrical joints that have not only a rotational component, but it also has a linear component as well. And even the drill can go in or out based on the uh, ac action of your, uh, your slider. If you really, really like this um, setup here, maybe a door open, door close type thing, I'm just going to pick something kind of random here. You can save that by hitting the apply button and it adds that actual mo um, position inside of your navigator so you can recall it later. Like I said, perfect uh, way to show door open, door closed without having to add actual motors itself. So if we pick uh, just one more, uh, I'll just create one more uh, joint. I'm just going to randomly pick something here. Hit the apply button. We get a second joint jogger on there. So you can toggle through first joint, and uh, should be able to toggle through the, uh, the second joint as, uh, as well to show the uh, door open, door closed. I'm getting some weird uh, display here, not because of the software, because I'm running a video edit or a video capture software and it's slowing things down just a little bit. So if you really want to show your, um, uh, your door open, door closed, you can use the joint jogger to set that up and remember that a little later on. All right, back to what we're trying to do here, create motors automatically. So. What the inverse kinematics does is it allows you to go to a, a rigid group. I want this rigid group to go from this point here on that model to uh, this angled face of this part. And I want it to rotate. Forty-five degrees to get it to match. I want it to rovo ro revolve around 90 degrees to match the cutter head and I'm going to give it a little bit of an offset somewhere around 40 or so millimeters. In an angled face this tends to be the hardest part where I'm actually what I'm doing is I'm matching up the coordinate systems here. To get the cutter here the XC has to go off this this odd direction here. The YC has to uh, get rotated around to um, to match that orientation here and the ZC is simply going to go along that direction like the cutter is in the original position. In the final position, it goes along that ZC. Then just kind of match up your coordinate systems graphically to figure out how you have to rotate things around. Once that, that is done, you hit the OK button and it adds these motors for you. So you can go right to the play button and it will um, uh, rotate and uh, do what it needs to do. So if we bring up our timeline, and turn on our motor color because it's just so cool. We can see all of the motors that were automatically created and if we dance our cursor back and forth we can see exactly how the um, the cutter goes into position and drill is actually happening at the same time which you probably don't want. Maybe you want this drill to actually happen later on so just simply slide that out. It gets in the position then the drill does its magic. 
So if you want to mirror this, you probably figured this out by now based on the last exercise. Just highlight everything, right click, and hit mirror, and it creates that uh, return operation for you. So within a matter of a few seconds, we were able to define the start position, the end position, and the system calculated these motors for you. Just a couple caveats with the uh, current state of the uh, inverse kinematics command. So right now it creates the motors for you and they can be edited independently, they can be deleted, so on and so forth. And you only get one start and one end. What we're actually updating the um, inverse kinematics uh, up to uh, a soon to release version is you can specify points along the way. Maybe you want it to go over, around, up, then down, then hit your destination. You can define all those key points along the way to get it to do that and it will be editable. But right now it just creates the, uh, the motors for you in an um, independently editable fashion.